Hi fellow researchers, I have been making a series of videos where I discuss different experimental designs and in that regard today's video is the second video in the series. Uh, my previous video discussed the one shot experimental case study. You can find the link in the description section below and today's video will discuss one group pre-test post-test design as part of a pre-experimental design. So in today's video, we will see how in a group or in one group, the pre-test and post-test design is implemented with a couple of different examples. So let's get started. So in this type of a design, a single group undergoes a pre-experimental observation or evaluation, then is administered the experimental treatment and finally, the same group is observed or evaluated again after the treatment. Let's see the first example. So suppose an elementary school teacher wants to know if simultaneous reading a story and listening to it on the audio tape will improve the reading skills of students in his class. He gives his students a standardized reading test and then has them simultaneously read and listen to simple stories every day for eight weeks and then administers an alternate form of the same standardized reading test. If the student's test scores improve over the eight week period, the teacher might conclude, perhaps accurately and perhaps not, that the simultaneous reading and listening intervention was the cause of the improvement. Let's take another example. Now suppose an agronomist crossbreeds two strains of corn. She finds that the resulting hybrid strain is more disease resistant and has a better yield than either of the two parent types. Now she concludes that the cross breeding process has made the difference. Now once again, the observed and then the experiment and then the observed design is used. The agronomist measures the disease level of the parent strains and then develops a hybrid of the two strains and then measures the disease level of the next generation. However, in a one group, the pre-test post-test design, you will know that a change has taken place, but you will not be able to rule out that there could be other possible explanations for the change. In the case of the school teacher study, improvements in the reading scores may have been due to other activities within the classroom. For example, they might have practiced more or simply the fact that the students were eight weeks older. In this experiment of the agronomist, changes in rainfall, temperature or soil conditions may have been the primary reason for the healthier corn crop. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of using the one group pre-test post-test design. You may use this to see if there is an impact, but you will need a more controlled study to make sure that the cause and effect relationship is clearly defined and that the effect is not due to other variables that you have not controlled for. So I'll end this video here. If you have any questions, write it in the comment section. In my next video, I will take up another design case study, which will be the static group comparison, which will be again part of the pre-experimental design. I look forward to reading your comments and feedback and I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye for now.